Question. If you're a first-time business buyer, should you consider hiring a business broker or a merger and acquisition advisor to help you navigate your first business transaction? Well, consider what a broker or a merger and acquisition advisor brings to the table. Knowledge, expertise, access to trusted advisors, and hopefully eliminating costly mistakes that you as a first-time buyer may not even know about. The old adage, you don't know what you don't know, really applies to this. So if you're a first-time business buyer, stick around because I think this video may help you make up your mind how you want to treat this first transaction. If you've got any questions as we go through this presentation, please feel free to put them in the comment section below, write me an email, or just simply give me a call and we'll talk about what's ever on your mind or questions that you might have. In addition, if you find this video helpful, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. And with that, Let's talk about why you, as a first-time business buyer, may want to hire a broker or an M&A consultant to help you navigate, negotiate, and close a first transaction. And this really comes down to your personal experience. You know, if you were a corporate executive and uh, had done some M&A or been exposed to that, then you may want to just try this on your own. Uh, knowing that there's a broker or an M&A consultant to step in if you need it. But let's talk about what a broker uh, brings to the table. First of all, knowledge, uh, expertise, an understanding of the process, and access to other trusted advisors that you may need to make a prudent financial decision as you go down the, the road. So again, a little bit about you don't know what you don't know, and then hiring a competent advisor to help you negotiate, which could be a costly transaction if you make a mistake. I believe that there are several reasons why most first-time business buyers don't hire either a business broker or a merger and acquisition advisor. And I believe the first one is they really don't understand the process that they're, gonna, they're just walking into and the expertise required to navigate and negotiate a successful transaction. And then second of all, the cost. Um, and I believe most people, most buyers are uh, ill-advised or just really don't understand how a business broker representing a buyer makes their income. So let's talk about a business that are usually at $2 million or less. Two formulas that are usually used in the business. Um, one is a retainer fee plus dollars earned on milestones achieved. So there may be a retainer fee up front, another fee that's earned against a commission or just earned when you reach a letter of intent, another one at due diligence, another one when the purchase and sale agreement is done or at closing. And then the other formula is really around a retainer fee plus a percentage of the purchase price at closing. And depending on the size, that could range anywhere from 2 to 4%. Now, let's talk about what you're paying for in either one of those formulas. What are you paying for? What are you paying for with the hiring of a business broker or an M&A consultant to help you in your first purchase? Well, I think it boils down to four things. Knowledge, expertise, process, a full understanding of that process, and then finally, a introduction or access to his or her uh, trusted advisors as you go through this process. And then finally, I think at the 50,000 foot level, you're actually hiring somebody to assess the risk of a transaction and to help you negotiate and reduce that risk in purchasing that transaction. The first thing your broker is going to do is put a needs list together to submit to the seller. 
Now that needs list is going to form the backbone of a data room and it'll include things like three to five years worth of financials, which includes tax returns, internal profit and loss statements, um, balance sheets, accounts receivable and accounts payable aging, as well as a customer concentration analysis, working capital requirements for the business, a review of key employees, contracts, and the business's licenses to see if they're transferable to you or if you have to go out and actually obtain new licenses. Now, once all that data is collected and analyzed, the broker is going to be able then to supply you with a market range valuation and an idea of what a letter of intent and deal structure might look like. Negotiating the letter of intent uh, involves probably a couple back and forth, but a well-prepared letter of intent is going to identify the purchase price, the deal structure, and some of the de-risking elements, whether that's a seller note, uh, there may be a clawback for customer concentration uh, involved in it, or it may just be a straight seller note. And then once that negotiation is complete, then the buyer, uh, your representative, is going to be able to help you with preparing and searching for acquisition financing. Now this is where a good broker is going to have a source of different lenders to go to. In a lot of lenders, they're not all created the same. Uh, they may all offer SBA financing, but they all have their individual overlays on top of that financing. And so they're gonna pair you and the business with the best uh, lender that works for that specific transaction. As you're working with a lender to acquire your acquisition financing, at the same time, you need to also be working with an attorney to draft the purchase and sale agreement on the business. Now again, this is where your broker with their trusted advisors, if you don't have an attorney, they can help you uh, locate one that can work for you. Now, once the acquisition financing is complete and you're approved and conditions are, are completed, the purchase and sale agreements agreed to, then you move to closing and coordinating closing between both the buyer and the seller, the uh, requirements that are needed uh, to satisfy not only the purchase and sale agreement, but the acquisition financing are all put into a, a closing escrow and you go and close. So what are you paying for? A lot of expertise, process knowledge, access to trusted advisors. So in the end of the day, if you've done this before, you probably don't need to hire a buy-side representation, but you do need to think about this if you've never purchased a business before and you don't come out of a corporate environment where you've done a lot of mergers and acquisitions. At a high level, hiring a business broker or an M&A advisor to help you purchase your first business, what are you buying? Knowledge, expertise, access to trusted advisors, knowing what to ask, the process, and then time. Hiring an advisor I really think is going to help you uh, eliminate time and obviously costly mistakes. And time kills deals and you have to understand what your time is worth when purchasing a transaction. And then lastly I'd say Hiring a broker is going to keep a good relationship between you and the seller because the broker is going to act as the middleman. I hope you got something out of this video and if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button and we'll see you on the next episode.